What's up everybody, James Jackson here, back again with another video. If you're new to the channel, I'd give tips and tricks and go over news of revolving film and video productions. So if you like the content here, please make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that bell so you can stay up to date on all the content that is coming here. So there's been a lot of news coming out recently. Uh, so I've got quite a few videos to sort of go into all the news that are sort of coming out. IBC is just kicking off, so uh, we're probably gonna hear a lot more. Uh, but first I wanna start off with uh, the camera that got, finally got announced that I have been actually excited and been trying to predict for like the past year and a half about. Um, not exactly the camera that I thought it was, but it's pretty much exactly what it is. If, if you haven't figured it out, it is the Canon C500 Mark II which I originally thought it was gonna be like the C400 or C300 Mark III replacement, but essentially it is, it's replacing the C300 uh, Mark II as the broadcast uh, camera. And you're probably wondering why is, should you be excited about this? Because obviously it comes at a relatively hefty cost at $15,000. Say what? But with that $15,000, you are getting a camera that can shoot 6K full frame at 60 frames per second with dual pixel autofocus, 10 stops of built-in NDs, image stabilization, and all the different flavors and logs and everything you know that typically comes with Canon's EOS Cinema line. This joint is a beast and I am super excited about this camera uh, this is definitely a camera I'm gonna be keeping my eye on um, as you know people come into because I'm certainly not going to be getting it anytime soon but it is something that I'm definitely look maybe looking into the future of maybe replacing my C200 with so let's go into some of the, some of the flavors I've already talked about oh I'm sorry no there's one more other thing I forgot to mention this thing shoots 6K raw at 60 frames per second internally. So that's the big thing. I'm, uh, that is the big, big thing that is about this camera. 6K raw internal recording. And then you get all the different flavors of XFAVC that you can record to in 10 bit from uh, 4k all the way down to HD today. I wanted to make this video sort of why would somebody cons Consider this camera given the marketplace for film and video production Why would somebody look at a camera that is fifteen thousand dollars when you got a camera like hold on this camera the black magic pocket cinema camera 6k and uh, That is significantly less than the price of the C500. And I wanted to sort of address that head on. And the reason um, why I believe many people would be looking at that camera and say, compared to something like a Pocket 6K. Now, don't get it twisted. The, the Pocket 6K is a amazing camera, delivers amazing quality of images. For what it can do at its price point of $2,500, it's, it's mind-blowing what Blackmagic has done uh, in the short period of time. But there are some things that, to me, I look at that camera and a couple things come to mind. And this may affect your decisions on what you may look at for cameras, may, maybe not. But this is no things that why somebody would look at this camera, even at its heavy price. Number one is reliability. Say what you will about Canon and their, their sort of taking specific things out of their cameras to sort of put the, uh, protect certain cameras. One of the things that is consistent around all of their cameras is reliability. Uh, I've worked with Canons from their DSLRs to their cinema line of cameras, shooting on the Canon C200 right now. And what has been consistent across all of those cameras is the fact that when camera implements something, it is reliable, it does not come short. You don't have to worry about if they implement something into a camera and 
first and it's completely useless based on what the camera's capable of doing like sony sony implements s-log3 in their alpha line of cameras even though it pretty much is useless for that type of camera simply because it's the max they can do is 8-bit and s-log3 requires a 10-bit codec the next thing is they don't beta test their purchasers their consumers people that get these cameras know the quality that is coming out of these cameras they may not be like industry technologically leading with these cameras but what they, but they are workhorses you don't have to worry about a, a, it's just shutting down randomly in the middle of a shoot like red tends to do or find a situation where so, something goes completely wrong and you're maybe in the middle of a wedding day and then all of a sudden the camera goes up in smoke that actually happened to one of my friends on a wedding set the Pocket 6K he had actually started smoking and was um, going haywire. So, and that's one of the things. As much as I love Black Magic and what they all, and they're continuing to push the boundaries, they also ha still continue to deal with quality control thing. Something that Canon has not had to experience with any of their EOS cinema line of cameras. They go through thorough vetting. So you know when you go and purchase this camera, it is holding up to the value that it is priced at. Number two is ergonomics. Canon probably delivers some of the best ergonomic features in all of the of all the video focused cameras, especially with their cinema line cameras. And the C500 Mark II is no different. The fact of how modular it is. Thank God that they actually give you the option to put the EVF on should you want it or not, but you can easily take it off yourself. You don't need to take it in. You can add uh, different other modularities where you can put a large modularity which can give you two additional XLR inputs on top of the two that you already have built into the camera and you can get four independent channel audio inputs. That is going to be huge for people that do high industry sound mixing or maybe you're running with reality TV. And then you got the smaller version that can basically be used for like just you no know, gin lock for gin lock and some other just smaller different features for broadcasting. This thing is going to be major, major hit in broadcasting. But the big thing that I'm really excited about is the fact that it has an interchangeable mount. So it comes natively with an EF, but you can purchase a PL or a locking EF mount and then switch it out on your own. You don't need to take it in to have it swapped out. You can actually just switch it in and out. So now if you want to go with those higher end cinema glasses, you can get the PL mount and just build it in yourself. Uh, or if you want to get a more stable EF mount, you can get the locking EF mount. So having the options to switch whenever you can, that is a huge benefit that a lot of cameras don't tend to offer. Now, there are cameras that do offer it, like Kinfinity and Blackmagic with their Ursa Mini Pros. Um, they definitely, especially Blackmagic with how affordable their PL mount system is. But the modularity of the camera is definitely a huge selling point along with the ergonomic features. Dual pixel autofocus, once again, the leading industry leading autofocus system uh, is going to be a monster hit. The fact that you can do that with RAW internally. <sighs> Let me just remind you guys, before it was just the C200 that can only do 4K RAW 12-bit internally with dual pixel autofocus. Now, it has its bigger brother, the Canon C500 Mark II, that can also do it. But the C500 is the only camera in the world that can actually shoot 6K, 12-bit RAW, full frame, internally, with a continuous dual pixel autofocus system. There's still no other camera in the world that can do that. The third thing is obviously the RAW codexes. Cinema Raw Lite is maybe not as you know easily as flexible as Blackmagic Raw, but it is a more option-friendly Raw codec in terms of NLEs. Because unlike Blackmagic Raw, where there's still a few uh, NLEs that it's still working on, 
it's expanded it it has expanded it, you know where you can put black magic raw on, and we'll talk about that in another video but canon cinema raw light it still hits all the three major platforms final cut premiere resolve uh avid vegas it all cinema raw light is usable in natively in all of those platforms uh, so having that in a camera, especially when you can do 6K, is going to be a huge selling point for this camera. The fourth thing, and this is probably to me one of the most important ones, is time. Having a camera that has everything right there on the camera, you don't have to worry about re setting a, a recording option up and making sure that everything is flowing through to this external recorder and making sure the media is is capturing everything right. You can all do, do that right there in camera with CF Express cards. And then you can also, at the same time, record proxies. Some of these cameras that have the capability of shooting raw externally, you can't necessarily record proxies. This camera, you can do it all in camera. You can record proxy, so you can take that to the, your editor to get you know, things going. And then when you finally need to go in to start the color grading process, you can put the raw back, you can put the raw into the NLE and then just finish up and wrap up. It's such a great time-saving workflow. And that was one of the things that Max Jarvie brought up when he was talking about his issues with the Pocket 4K. The time that he has to terms of setup and terms of post-production, all of that he makes up in the times that he got with the C200. And this is going to be the same thing with the C500. The amount of time that you can, that you can save to go on and do other projects and do other things, that is why, isn't why to me, the big reason why the $15,000, to me, I don't see it as some big difference because people just tend to like looking at it in terms of just specs what is the camera capable of so they compare it's like well this camera is capable of doing this camera cable as the same thing as this camera but this camera is almost seven times its asking price so why in the world would i go with that camera and to which i say time the, mo the money you can make back with the canon c200 is significantly more in the same expense, same amount of time than you could necessarily than with a Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera 4K. Sounds crazy, but it is because of how everything just works and how Canon's EOS Cinema line works. These are cameras that are designed to work with you as partners. They are there to help you get paid and get the money. That is what this camera is designed for. So. As long as you are continuing to do work, this camera is only going to help you with in terms of managing the time and cutting down t in terms of cost of time, as well as allowing you to free up to do more projects. So, if you may, if you, if you want to look at it as, as oh, it's fifteen thousand dollars, it's crazy. Instead, look at it as an investment that you can make the money back if you really are hustling and really going at it. You can make your money back easily with this camera. So who is this camera for? And to me, this camera is definitely for those who are who've been in the in the film and video industry for a while and just need a camera to sort of just take away some of the the, the necessarily um, some of the jobs from the cinematographer and somebody that just, again it's to work sort of more proper. I think this is going to be killer for solo indie shooters uh, that are definitely in more of the higher end commercials. Uh, I think reality TV is going to be a big hit with this camera because of its broadcast features. I think this is going to do big with Netflix channel original series. Uh, people who are doing feature relay fills for like that that are delivering content to like places like Netflix. Um, and I think it's, again, it's broadcast standard, so it's definitely going to be a monster hit in the broadcast uh, environment. So that's my takeaway on the C500. My personally, this is the best camera right now. Canon has really came in and delivered, my personal opinion, the ultimate future-proof camera as of now. We'll see what comes in the future, but right now this is the best future-proof camera you could get 
in the time frame right now of cameras that are produced. But let me know what you think. Do you think the $15,000 asking price is way too much? You think, do you think the camera is as good as I think it is? Or do you still think you wanna go with other cameras? Let me know, leave a comment below. Make sure to hit that subscribe button again. And until next time, take care everyone.